Hello my lovely year three, we're going to be using our design today to make our pot. How very exciting. You're going to need a wooden board to work on, a plastic sheet over the board. You're going to need two colours of clay. Do you remember we want to use two colours? These are rolling guides and a rolling pin which will be very handy. Then you've got all sorts of tools like a paintbrush and then you've got things to gouge out clay and then you've got pointy shapes that you can draw in the clay with um, you've got ones with serrated edges and all sorts of shapes that you can use um, so put those to one side you also need a little pot with water and a sponge and then you need your bowl that you're going to build your pot on top of and you need to line it with some cling film in the inside if you're going to build your pot on the inside or on the outside if you're going to do that different people do it differently and I'll show you how in a bit but first we're going to be making our sunflower this is what I'm doing you're going to be making things other than sunflowers I'm going to show you three ways to make petals so first of all you can use those rolling guides with your rolling pin it makes sure that the clay isn't too thin and then you use one of the cutting tools to make petal shapes which you cut out individually one at a time like that lovely you can use pick up the mat to uh, peel them off if they don't come off straight away that's the point of having the plastic um, keep any little bits of clay uh, in, a, in a lump that's great you then smooth these down and make them very nice and then you make the edges rough so that they will stick together do you remember we did that in the coil pot making the edges rough so they stick together with a bit of water as well and then you can put two petals together Okay, let's just try that. Lay one in the bowl on top of the cling film and the other one next to it. And then you can blend the two bits together. But at the top, I want them kept separately so we keep our nice petal shapes. Do we see how we're doing that? Blending it in. And we're going to rough up the centre because the centre will go on top. That's not a problem. And we just keep going. Now, another way, instead of cutting, is shaping your petals by rolling it out and then by uh, sort of like rolling it thinner at one end to make the tip of your um, petal and I'm just doing another one and roughing up the edges so we can stick those together as well like so you get the idea you just smooth them out so they get stuck nicely and then they'll lay in like we did with the cut out petals okay let's have a look at a third way that we could do our bowl this is where we use one whole shape um, if you remember when we did the leaves we did this I made a ball I flattened it out with a rolling pin I then cut around the edge of all my petals I then going to lay a piece of cling film on and draw out my petal shapes remember that keeps it really neat and then I just laid it in my bowl I then started making my center uh, which was I, I used something to cut around or again you could just make a ball and flatten it um, and I poked bits of uh, ends of the tools in and then I stuck it in the centre. Can we see that? So again I scratched up the surfaces before sticking it down and that worked really well. I then made another bowl inspired by these oak leaves and acorns and I did a different technique uh, here. I did it on the outside of the bowl. I decided I wanted to build it more on the outside and it's a, a choice whichever you think works best. So you can see here I made a leaf um, out of paper and I used that to draw around and around and I just cut out lots of the leaf shapes, smoothed down the edges with water and stuck those on. I then put my cling film over the top and drew on the veins and there you can see I used a little bit of the terracotta clay to make the acorns and that's what it looked like when it was all dried. I didn't smooth the edges enough on that, you need to smooth it more with water. Now the next one I made was inspired by one of these, a sea anemone. They're absolutely one of my favourite little creatures, an invertebrate creature that lives under the sea, a sea anemone. And so I made this using the technique um, that I suggested for the sunflower as well, where I rolled out little spiky shapes for the tentacles. And I just made a big pile of those. And when I had plenty, I just started laying them inside my bowl and smooshing them together at the bottom 
lots of nice wet clay smooshing it all together can you see how i'm blending it all together because i was going to put lots more under there so it didn't matter it didn't have to keep the shapes just slow that down so you can see a bit more clearly do you see how i'm smooshing it and blending it i'm really bringing the clay together so it's going to stay strong if you're building something like this with lots of gaps you've got to make sure that the clay is thick enough and there we go, I'm adding some little details in the dark brown. Yeah, make sure the clay is thick enough and it's really well joined. And there's my finished sea anemone pot. Okay, there we go. And our last one I'm going to show you is this ammonite, which is a type of fossil. If you remember, we looked at fossils earlier on in the year. So I decided to make you a fossil themed bowl. And for this, we use a similar way of doing things as we did for the coil pots. We um, rolled out long sausages for that. And I did the same for this. I just rolled out sausages. Then I covered them in the cling film so I could make the markings neatly. And I did lots of lines all the way along so that it made like the uh, markings you get on the ammonites and then just wet the edges and coiled it together making sure it was nice and firmly stuck together into a good coil and you can see I made lots of these and then I started sticking them on I'm just putting the last one on for you and we place them on if there are any gaps you go back and you fill that up with the clay now the underneath of the pot's not going to be seen because that's what it sits on so i can really use my water here and bits of clay and i can smooth that down completely we don't need to see that bit but yeah lots of little bits of clay to fill up the gaps to make sure it wasn't going to split and fall to bits and smoothing it down really nicely and there you have the finished bowl on the outside now what i was clever at here is i also decorated the inside at the same time because i decorated both sides before sticking them down give it a go see what you come up with phew that was a whistle stop tour of lots of different techniques for making our pots but all you have to do is ask yourself some simple questions what's the best way to make my pot design whatever your natural form is just have a look is it better to make one big piece like i did when i made my sunflower with one flat piece of clay that I rolled out and shaped? Is it better to make it out of lots of pieces like I did with my ammonite and my um, sea anemone where I made lots of little bits and I fixed them together as I went? Is it better to cut out lots of the same shapes like I did with the oak leaves, getting all the same shapes cut out and then layering them on? There's lots of different techniques there. The last thing to think about is remember when you're doing your decorations, lay on cling film because it makes a much better and neater image and much better and neater lines. If you're rolling out shapes, you need to use the guides to make sure they don't get too thin. That's a good top tip. And finally, if you're going to work on your bowl on another day because you haven't quite finished, make sure you wrap it up really well in cling film. That way you'll stop it from drying out so you can continue with it on another day or in another lesson. Fantastic. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. I can't wait to see your beautiful natural form pots. Bye.